PCOS or PCOS, and it's pronounced both ways, is a common female hormonal disorder. And it's really an ovarian disorder, and it's, it's characterized by infrequent uh, and unpredictable menses, a slight excess of male hormone, and a characteristic appearance to the ovaries, i.e. polycystic ovaries. PCOS is diagnosed a lot on, on history, so a woman will have very infrequent uh, and or unpredictable menstrual periods. So an ordinary woman will have a menstrual cycle roughly every 28 days or 13 uh, menstrual cycles in a year, whereas a woman with PCOS will have two or three or four in a, in a year and, and never quite know when it's going to come. The women can have an excess of male hormone and that often presents with uh, excess body hair, you know, often in the midline, in the chin, in the lips, uh, that, that is noticeable and, and um, that women want to get rid of. Uh, we certainly think that there's a familial uh, tendency. We also know that certain conditions in the environment can bring it up. For instance, a gain of weight uh, can bring out symptoms of it in some women. And there also may be certain medications that may bring it on in susceptible women. Um, we do a variety of um, research here. One of these uh, tries to uh, find out what exactly causes PCOS. And we really have two large studies that are ongoing now. The first is a family-based study in which we study women with PCOS, their sisters, their brothers, their fathers, and their mothers. And we've, uh, over the years, we've looked at um, the inheritance of certain familial traits, for instance, um, excess androgen production, both male and female relatives, and also we've looked at metabolic abnormalities such as lipid and uh, glucose abnormalities in the families, and we've certainly found that these traits tend to cluster in the families. We also um, have been looking for genes uh, that might cause PCOS using a family-based approach, and we've found really one interesting candidate gene that is associated with both high androgen levels and also with insulin abnormalities in the families. Uh, and we're currently embarking on a very large study, uh, uh, what's called a genome-wide association study, uh, that will be looking at women with PCOS and women without PCOS, and we'll do really what's called a genome-wide scan, and that's going to be a large, multi-center approach. An another important study that really um, came out of our initial family study is that the, the mothers were very interested in knowing when their daughters were affected and if their daughters were affected. And right now, it's a disorder that, since menstrual history is a part of it, it's really hard to diagnose until after menarche, which in, in the U.S., the average age is 13, and periods we, knew, we do know uh, from our studies, for instance, take about a year or so to normalize in a normal woman. So it's hard to diagnose before age 14 or 15. But obviously, there are many signs that some of these girls have early, and probably the, one of the earliest signs might be an early development of, of midline hair. And so when mothers notice that and they say, well, I have hair, and now my daughter has hair, and she's 10 or 11 years old, what should I do about it? So we're doing uh, what we call the children's study, in which we're specifically studying daughters of mothers of PCOS, and we're also studying daughters of mothers who do not have PCOS. And we're studying both the mothers and the daughters concurrently. And we're following them up over time as they go through puberty to try and see what those early signs are.